What's happening, everybody? Pastor Matt Stokes coming to you on Saturday afternoon to just, uh, man, I wanted to talk to you about um, the evidence. And first of all, usually I put on some background music or something that I was listening to that's motivating me at the time. And um, Jesse sent me this song. And uh, so I listened to it and uh, I just broke down crying. Um, so then um, I listened to it like five more times, right? Debbie, Tom, Stephanie. And like, I was weeping so hard um, that I thought, man, I wanted to come online and tell you guys about this worship song. And uh, what happened was is I, so I put the lyrics and I was going to read them to you. I, as I started to set it up, I start crying again so much that I can't do that. So I'm going to leave a link to this below and you guys can listen to this, this song, God Moves in Mysterious Way. Uh, the words are, are amazing and I just wish I could share it with everybody. Um, and so I was going to come out to the shed to make a video. And as I did, Jesse was putting together all of his equipment um, to, to do a particular job. And he said, hey, Dad, what's going on? Well, I just, the tears started just coming down again. And I showed him the phone that I'm, I had the earbuds in, like that I was listening to this song. And then he said, Dad, we know what song that is, right? And I'm like, well, I feel like I've heard it before, but he said, um, your friend Tom sent that to you about a year ago when he heard what happened to you and to us and uh, He said that the Lord gave him this song and he played this this the song that he played well Whatever in a multitude of last year I was so in the washing machine at this particular moment that I don't remember all the messages and encouragements that were coming in even from Jesse or my friend Tom who's a pastor, right? And um, so here we are a year later and, you know, Jesse sends the song to a group of guys that get together and we just encourage each other on a regular basis. He throws the song in. My whole world's kind of turned upside down in terms of the this morning. And uh, it's the song that Tom sent me one year ago. And uh, I'm just saying, talk about the Holy Spirit just really having an affect on a person's soul so i wanted to send this to you i don't want to over speak it you know why because i've like i've said so many times before maybe this song is just for me right maybe it's not for everyone else and for that reason um when i try to share it with you you're gonna go it's okay <laughs> like that might happen but um this is what it meant to me and i'm uh enneagram four for those of you who know about you know personality dna so my heart is to always want to share what i have going on in my heart with you because i want you to experience what i experience which of course can always be sort of like a positive it could also be a negative right depending on how you appreciate or don't appreciate that person um so here's what i want to talk to you about evidence right so in the context of forgiveness, um, it, it, the person who is not showing, listen, switching gears, let's jump tracks. The person who's not showing forgiveness is, is showing something else, right? The person who's not showing forgiveness is actually showing evidence that they have not experienced forgiveness themselves, particularly I'm saying biblical forgiveness, forgiveness from Christ, redemption, reconciliation, restoration. The person who's not showing forgiveness to others is showing that they haven't experienced it themselves, right? It would be the same way as if you were to see me, um, let's say like tomorrow I came into the worship space and just started handing out like massive amounts of money, okay? All right, so most of you know that I don't have that and can't do that. So if I did, you would then make a deduction. You would say to yourself, well, apparently something, someone 
must have been very generous to Matt because Matt has now in turn has the capacity now to go and turn and be generous to others, right? That's just a simple deduction. If I receive something I didn't have and now I have it and I'm giving it to others, you would say he must have been, he must have somehow received that from somewhere else. So hopefully you can make the metaphor, which is so true in so many areas of life. And I'm saying, particularly in the context of forgiveness, the evidence that I've received forgiveness is, is equal to the measure that I'm actually able to take that and give what I have. You've often heard that said before, you can't give someone something you don't have. You can't give the measles to someone if you don't have the measles, right? So if you've received forgiveness, that's evidenced in the way that you give forgiveness. And in the parable of the of the unforgiving debtor that Jesus tells in the scriptures, and we're gonna talk about that tomorrow at Coastal, um, you can see that although the Jesus is bringing up a, a massive inconsistency in that a man was forgiven of an enormous debt, and yet he was not forgiving of a smaller debt himself. And Jesus is bringing this up and says that that person is actually going to experience punishment. And then he turns, and I can just imagine as he looks at the crowd after contemplating the parable, and he says, so will your heavenly Father do to you if you don't forgive from your heart, right? From your heart, right? Because you can say that you forgive, and there are people that say, I forgive you, but they really didn't forgive in their heart, right? And there are some people that say, will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Like, there's some people that can ask for forgiveness, and that's not from their heart either. And there's probably not a person watching this that hasn't experienced both. Where somebody said, will you forgive me? And you know they didn't mean it. And there's other times where you tried to muster up, you tried to drum up some kind of forgiveness, and you realized if you were squared off and honest with yourself that you really didn't forgive. I feel like this is such an important concept for the church today on so many levels, right? That that's why I want to continue to discuss this. So I did a few messages on forgiveness a few months ago, but I'm coming back to revisit it tomorrow and then maybe one more subsequent message um, in the near future uh, because this is something that we all, we all relate to and not only relate to, but we all have to wrestle with on a regular basis throughout our sanctification journey. If I was to talk to you and say, hey guys, I'm talking about finances tomorrow, so I want you to bring your checkbook and pray. <laughs> like, like some of you are gonna relate to that and some of you aren't, because that's not like your issue. But on the other hand, if I talked about that, I could even say marriage. If I talked about marriage and fidelity and, fate and, and, and longevity and what it looks like to go through that, you would be like, okay, I get some of that, but I'm not married. In fact, I'm not even in a relationship. You might hit some people or you might not. But when you talk about forgiveness, when you talk about the wrongs that you have done and the wrongs that have been done to you, there is no one that is that is immune from being affected or affected by the context of forgiveness. Again, talking about evidence, the evidence that you have received forgiveness is directly, that gavel comes down and says, true, right? That if you have received forgiveness, that is directly related to how much you are able to forgive. So what does forgiveness look like? What is forgiveness and what isn't forgiveness? Isn't that such an important subject to talk about? Does forgiveness mean that you condoned what they did? Does forgiveness mean that you are saying that you are right with what they did? Does forgiveness mean that you're going to let that person be unaccountable for what they did, right? Are you going to say that person's not, now that I've forgiven you, you're not actually responsible to fix what it is that you've broken. Okay, Is that what forgiveness is? Or does it have something to do with something from your heart that you're actually saying, I am not going to think evil of you. I am not going to have my own personal well wishes of your demise. I am not going to hope that the spirit of destruction visits your house tomorrow. Right? That I'm actually going to, what does Jesus say? I'm actually going to pray for you. I'm actually going to bless you. I'm actually going to do good to those who have despitefully said they, they've used you. Right? That's what Jesus says is the antidote, if you will, to hatred bitterness, personal arrogance, personal pride, my rights, my agenda, 
my decision on whether you're truly forgiven or not, right? Those type of things. And that's what we'll talk about the next time we get together. Because as I'm, as I'm presenting this message, I realize there's another message here that really needs to be spoken in terms of putting a bow on this whole thing on forgiveness and putting a lid on this and saying, okay, what's the practically look like for everybody that's willing to actually be honest with themselves and say, I haven't really been accurate in my understanding of what forgiveness is and isn't. So I want to revisit this. And then, you know, Pastor, I want the practical pieces of how I actually step into genuine forgiveness and what it looks like when it's coming from my heart, right? So tomorrow, Coastal Christian, Dolls Avenue School at 930. Would love to see you there as we kind of nail this down, this issue on forgiveness. And um, I have another announcement that I'm going to make to you guys I've been saying all week, and I'll share that with you tomorrow. Um, what else is there to say? I see so many uh, correspondences coming in, but I just wanted to actually not stay on long and get into all those details because I know so many of you probably can relate to all of this in terms of um, how to forgive injustice when there isn't justice meted back to you in that account of context where you're saying, I need to forgive. Oh my goodness. That's why forgiveness is so complex, right? Because it has so many nuances and levels to which you've been hurt and you have to meet it with that same level of forgiveness, right? So I'm going to say, hey man, like forgiveness is really hard, okay? Forgiveness is really hard. I'm going to tell you something that's even harder than forgiveness is living in unforgiveness, right? And I hope some of you are going to connect with that tomorrow and step into God's call to be forgiving in every context the same way that Christ has shown us, right? Jesus said, John 13, in terms of him just laying himself out in humility, he said, I've left you as an example, right? After he washed the disciples' feet, including, including Judas, who would betray him, he says, I left you an example. As I do, so you do. I've left you. Do you see what I just did for you? Jesus said, I've left you an example. As I do, so you do. So I want you to take that, hold it in your heart, and we'll see you tomorrow at Coastal Christian, Dawes Avenue School, 930. Bring somebody because there isn't a person that you can bring that is not going to connect with the most important subject of forgiveness. And I say most important because if there's something that the cross of Christ communicates almost more than any word, if I could wrap up the cross in one quintessential word, it would be the word forgiveness. So I hope you come tomorrow, bring someone who might connect with that, and we'll begin to, and we'll continue to watch God work. God bless you guys. I'm going to leave the link below so you guys can check out this song. Have a great Saturday afternoon.